this event is part of the project called Sharing Knowledge for a Stronger Agroecology Movement in Europe and Central Asia. It is hosted by the Community Practice on Agroecology in Europe and Central Asia called BILIM. BILIM in Turkish means knowledge. Built on 11 pillars of the Millennium Declaration on Agroecology, the network promotes strengthening of existing agroecology initiatives and helping to start up new agroecology schools. We hope you enjoy this uh, dialogue, uh, which will follow after presentation. And now a few words about Lili, who is uh, joining us from Hungary. Uh, Lili Balok uh, is uh, a bioengineer and tropical agronomical engineer. She's been actively involved in the international food sovereignty movement for uh, over the past decade. Uh, among others, she has worked in several eco-political NGOs to promote agroecology and regenerative food systems in different parts of the world. And for the past seven years, as we've learned since uh, the Nileni Forum in Romania, she has focused on building the Hungarian agroecology movement stronger. Recently, she's worked as the program manager of Greenpeace Hungary for a year, which she's led to engage more actively in the support of transition to sustainable food systems. In February 2002, Lili became the president of Agroecology Europe Association and the Hungarian Agroecology Network Association. And she's also fully having her hands, on, hands in the ground as uh, she has her own farm in West Nograd, in which she's been running since 2018 and where she applies a variety of approaches from holistic management through regenerative agriculture, permaculture and agroecology um, methods and approaches. Uh, I will not uh, continue here myself as we will hear quite a lot from Lily about Hungarian agroecology network and that very central European perspective. Uh, uh, but just to say that the uh, Ag Hungarian Agroecology Network is a diverse uh, forum of various stakeholders. It's transdisciplinary and intergenerational network, uh, which, uh, which is very much centered on uh, creating spaces for knowledge, co-production and uh, advocacy for agroecology. So uh, Lily, over to you. Thank you. So let me tell you the story about the Hungarian Agroecology Network, how it all started and uh, what different collaborations and cooperations we did in order to, to uh, strengthen and widen the movement. So uh, as uh, Joanna was mentioning, uh, in 2016, at the Nielen Europe Food Sovereignty Forum in Cluj, uh, we, uh, it was a really important moment as well for the whole European movement, I believe, because it catalyzed many different uh, actors and uh, regional actors. So as you could hear like a couple of weeks ago uh, from the Nielen Polska, the Polish uh, experience, I'm not going to say we have a similar, we have a similar one, but not an identical one, because it really created a momentum or there were, was a Hungarian delegation taking, uh, sorry, I'm going to slow, slow, uh, speak slower. I realize that I'm, I'm speaking too fast. So there was a Hungarian delegation that took play, uh, part as well in the forum and they wanted to, to continue to do, do this work. So, um, we organized in 2017 an event where we gathered from all over Hungary, different uh, actors, practitioners, some researchers who, who are um, active in, uh, in, uh, in creating an alternative food system, but nothing more concrete. It was more like a space for dialogue, but there was no concrete action. Uh, however, as we got already engaged in like uh, some international movements uh, and in collaboration with uh, Eco Ruralis, for instance, and uh, Hands on the Land project, we got involved as well uh, in the Peasant Rights Declaration promotion and, uh, and started already like to, to get familiar with international processes. And uh, talking about international pro uh, processes. I don't know whether you know the European Association for Agroecology, which is called Agroecology Europe, which uh, was uh, funded in 2016 uh, with the aim of promoting agroecology throughout Europe on, from, a practice, from the practice level to, to the policy level and everything that comes between, of course. 
Um, and uh, every two years, they organize a forum. And the first forum took place in 2017. And uh, I just wanted to bring it in this year as well, because even though that this was much more an academia focused meeting on agroecology, it was still a very important part in the whole agroecology movement in Europe, I believe, because it gathered for the first time in English language, different actors from all over Europe to talk about agroecology concretely. So we had the Nieleni Forum, a year later the Agroecology Europe Forum, and this gave us all inspiration that we should go further. And in 2018, we were asked to help in the, the organization of the FAO uh, Civil Society Consultation, where we had a lovely, fantastic group of people, and some of you, and I guess you recognize many familiar faces on the picture. So yet again, this was a, another uh, event which really gave us inspiration that how much more there is to do and why it is, is so important to collaborate with different actors, not only regionally, but like a wider region. And we continued as well, like our lobbying activity for the rights of peasants. And uh, that's when we, with a few colleagues, we started to organize in Hungary in collaboration with the Central European University based in Budapest, or which was used to base in Budapest still at this time, uh, the Agroecology Nice, which was an event series um, um, each time, like uh, um, get diving, di diving deeper into the different aspect of agroecology. So the first time it was like understanding like the big picture of agroecology. Then it was the economic dimension, the political dimension, and the social dimension as well of it, and the special focus on seeds, of course. And uh, here, each time we organize these events, the, the main aim was to really create a space for dialogue between the different actors yet again, because we really believe that we need to have the, to have the practitioners, the farmers, the academia, and the, the activists talking about the same topics. And uh, they might use different words, but we really need to create a dialogue and an understanding between them. So that was what it was in 2018. And then we realized while we were holding these events that actually it would be really good to understand what is actually happening in Hungary. Because I mean, I'm not saying that nothing was there before a uh, few colleagues and mine, we started to, to, to work upon it. Uh, of course, there have been tens and twenties and hundreds of years of wonderful tradition and, uh, and great movements that have arise, but like slowly, lost their energy. So um, together with Agroecology Europe and the Environmental Social Science Research Group, we carried out a mapping activity um, in 2019 and uh, 2020, which we presented uh, at the, uh, the European Forum of Agroecology in Crete in 2019. And uh, just a few more words about this mapping and the importance of this mapping, because we tried to, to get out of the usual research type of, uh, of course it's a research because I mean, it, it, uh, it, um, um, it has been well conceived and you know, like uh, it's not just a, a, a quick study, but we really wanted to have a cooperative re research methodology. So all throughout we have developed it like that. And uh, it's, um, it's, it's been based on, uh, on three different points. The first one was the mapping of the stakeholders to get really an overview of the different uh, people who are at, not pe only people, but organizations as well, and different actors who are involved in the various food networks, um, and whether they are from the science, the practice, the movement, and uh, as well getting an overview about like what has been going on in the past uh, decades. Then another second part was as well, of course, to do carry out a literature review, which is much more a scientific uh, approach of it. But uh, as as I said, like we still wanted to have a scientific research paper, but which is much more, it's made with and for the activists and for the practitioners. So it's not only we wanted to make a living document, but we needed it to have as well a concrete scientific literature review as well in it. And last but not least, and the most importantly, we carried out 10 qualitative explorative interviews 
who were carefully chosen to really represent different domains and different uh, constituencies of agroecology in Hungary. And what was really important for us is that we didn't approach the usual suspects. So really the people that, if you would say agroecology, they would run to, towards that person. So of course, actors who are some um, involved in agroecology, they might not use the word agroecology, but they are not the ones that have been contacted so far or have been interviewed so many times. So this is basically how the, the mapping has been um, uh, structured. And uh, I, I'm not going to present to you the, the whole, uh, whole document. It is available uh, on Agroecology Europe's website in English, both in English and Hungarian. And uh, but just two images to show you, because uh, like we can really gather different information from this, not only for, for us, one of the most important one was to realize like what a richness, a diversity of actors we have, not only geographically, as you can see it here on the on the map, uh, on, uh, yeah, this is Hungary. And of course, you can see that like the, the different crosses are, are um, representing either production places, uh, science, uh, agri uh, scientific uh, places, I mean, uh, who are based there, etc. But uh, to really understand, to see that there is a huge potential in this, and it's living there, and that we 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 are still there to to connect these people, and this is actually what we realized that there's a diversity of actors, but unfortunately they are not communicating, and so for us the most important part of it was to. Uh, uh, was realizing this, that, okay, if we want to create an agroecological movement and if, if we want to help the spread of uh, and uh, scaling out of agroecology, we need to connect the dots and we need to, I mean, by, of course, like voluntarily, but we need to enable a space where these conversations and these, ex these exchanges can happen because basically all these people and all these actors want the same thing, to, to transition, to adjust and... Uh, and the ecological food system. And uh, the other image on here, it was as well part of the qualitative interviews. Um, it was basically asking to the interpretation of, uh, of these actors of uh, what agroecology means to them, because uh, as I guess it is quite common in, uh, in our region, we don't really use the word agroecology. We use more words than organic farming, permaculture, sustainable farming, etc. And uh, agroecology has not been so used. So we really wanted to see when we, when we speak about agroecology, what do they understand with it? And I think it's quite interesting how important the spiritual and mat material relationship to the land came out. I mean, I, I was quite surprised as well that it was so um, one, of, one of the most uh, sad words yeah, during uh, our interviews. And of course, like biodiversity, I, I'm not so shocked because it's it's so evident. And I mean, uh, and uh, but for for me, this was like the most interesting part of it. But anyways, so back to the to, to the mapping. So we realized that there is this huge diversity of actors, but OK, now we produced a fantastic document. But what shall we do with it? So uh, in 2019, when we released the document, we organized a conference, the first Hungarian agroecology conference in collaboration with the Environmental Social Science Research Group and the French Institute in Budapest. And the aim yet again was, of course, to talk that we have this uh, mapping, but uh, to make it much more interactive and lively. So what we did, as you can see on the picture, we did like uh, big round tables that at least like five, five uh, uh, panel discussion, uh, panel panelists were there with a the moderator. And each time there were farmers, activists, uh, civil society members and researchers talking about, for instance, local food systems, our agrobiodiversity or landscape management, etc. And and so it already showed like that how important it is to create these dialogues and as well it was really interesting for the for the wider public because here what we wanted is to really open up the space and spread the word agroecology in the in the true understanding of it and we are also got engaged in a European project. It wasn't in 2020, we started in 2017 or 2018, but in 2020, we organized a, um, an international policy roundtable on sustainable catering 
and uh, and public procurement. And here yet again, it was uh, one more time where we realized like how it important it is to involve like different actors of the of the food system. For so for here, dietitian, um, doctors, um, policymakers, uh, regulations or institutions who are. Um, controlling like um, health and safety, et cetera. And it really, really was um, a proactive thing. Uh, and the, the, the actors were really interested and, and, and really pleased by the outcomes of it. And during this project, we had the ab ability as well to, to uh, carry out trainings for, um, for farmers and as well land managers and, uh, and civil society members about uh, um, building social capital and fostering collective action um, and uh, we have as well published a document in collaboration with croatian farmers about regen rethinking regenerative food systems but uh, in the meantime we still wanted to because as i said like the the word agroecology was not really or is not really used still in hungary more and more but we really wanted to to offer the wider public a better understanding that what is agroecology. So we made a publication about the 10 elements of agroecology of the FAO, each time explaining in a very nice with very nice pictures, as you can see on the right side, what we mean by efficiency, but what we mean by co-creation of knowledge, by uh, responsible governance, and each time giving Hungarian examples, two or three examples for each element with a a short text like describing what it means and a big a bigger text describing the the element and then two short texts or two or three texts with the uh, with images about the initiatives and um in oh yes yeah, sorry i forgot before so when in 2019 we organized that conference um uh, the the first conference a week later after after the conference, we we organized a workshop where we invited some of the main actors we identified to to carry out a, a workshop um, to 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 discuss about this that about our findings of the of the mapping whether we what we wanted to bring forward and what came out uh, is indeed that we need to create a network and uh, that we need to work upon this. So in 2020, um, in the fall, we uh, contacted Közélet Iskolája, which is a school of public life. And what they do is that they are helping different civil society organizations to, to work more democratically and use collective intelligence tools and popular education tools to, uh, to help their functioning uh, better. So we reached out to them and with the help of Scola Campesina, we designed a series of four or five uh, meetings where together we created the network and the pillars of the network. So it was really a bottom-up approach where we created our own functioning, our own rules, et cetera. And uh, so this was in 2020. And in 2021, still in COVID, we were holding uh, quite regular meetings. Almost every me week, we had like different working group online meetings, but we as well organized once it was possible some personal meetings, and um, and as well uh, we carried on like to to act together. Um, for the organization of conferences, webinars, trainings, and even policy recommendations. So for instance, the common agriculture policies, uh, we made a, um, a position paper, a joint po a position paper with the different actors. And now I realize that I haven't yet mentioned who are the uh, members of the, of the network. So um, right now on the, or on our, um, on our list, we have 60, 60 members, but of course, like this will, this will uh, open up hopefully now because uh, we we have been in kind of a um, hibernate not hibernating period but more of a winter period as it is winter but anyways so the 60 members we wanted uh, who we invited for the first round of um, of these um, participatory methodology uh, development of uh, of the basis of, uh, of the functioning of the network we invited uh, farmers researchers activists cso's from all over europe and from different uh, all over europe sorry all over hungary 
uh, and from different institutions and trying to have like a ge geographical uh, diversity, but as well of different scales and different topics. So we, it wasn't like, okay, let's invite everyone, but more like targeted. And that's why we, we are still yet only at 60 members, even though we have received many other uh, interests of people, but we have still have to figure it out, like uh, the, the structure of letting in new ones and how it will work. Um, and yet again, because I think at the core of this whole uh, uh, presentation of mine of today or the discussion is, is collaboration. So I wanted to bring you uh, one where we were one of the catalyzers of this uh, Food Sovereignty Month that was organized in 2021. And as you can see, not even all the logos of all the, the different organizations is there on the to the right side here. Uh, but this shows as well that many of our uh, of our network members have been as well involved in this. But so something has already started in 2021. And uh, yet again, we created this network to to be able to act upon like important happenings, just like as for instance, the the um, the position paper on the new cap. But for instance, in 2021, in February, there was a news coming up that uh, they're going to merge all the all the big universities, uh, agrarian universities in Hungary, and that uh, organic production uh, course will be deleted or like will be raised. So we contacted uh, Greenpeace Hungary uh, uh, and uh, Agroecology Europe whether we, they wanted to support us in the organization of an uh, international webinar where um, we invited the three um, um, best agrarian universities of the world to present, uh, well, out of the three, two are European, the third one is American, so we didn't invite the American one because it's a different system, but so we invited the two European ones and two other initiatives. The conference is available on this website and it's in English, so if you're interested, it's really, it's it's quite interesting because it really shows the importance of uh, agroecology in education and research and how different approaches are tackled in Wageningen in the Netherlands or um, in SLU, which is the Swedish university, agrarian university. But we have as well the gastronomic sciences uh, in uh, Bra in uh, Italy, and as well the um, innovative farmers um, program in the UK, where it's a farmer led uh, research program. So anyways, it's, it was a really important and interesting event that we organized. And yet again, I just wanted to show that it was a collaboration between yet, uh, different, uh, different uh, actors, and that's why it could work. And yet again, another conference we organized on the importance of water and water management. And um, the first collaborative or real collaborative project uh, um, of research yet uh, that we continued was as well of doing a mapping uh, of um, of the state of art, it wasn't an, such an in-depth mapping that we carried out for uh, for these uh, ten uh, bio east countries. This, uh, this was a bio. Uh, this is a bio east project. Uh, we were just uh, consultants here to create this uh, thematic study about an indicator system, or like assessing different indicator systems like tape, oases, uh, uh, etc., to see whether how uh, uh, applicable they are in our region from the Baltic down to the Balkan go through going through Central and Eastern Europe and as well like uh, some regional specificities about like uh, what hinders and promotes agroecology. This is as well available on the BioWiz website but I guess we will provide you all the resources. And in 2022 we formalized ourselves into uh, becoming a um, um, an, um, an association because right until in 2021 we were an informal network because we were still figuring it out like how we want to collaborate and what options there are but of course uh, there are much more options especially for funding uh, uh, and we need funding if we want to to work upon these things if we formalize ourselves so we in 2022 february we created the hungarian agriculture network association which is basically the the workforce or like right now the workforce behind uh, the the associate uh, the, the network and we applied for the first uh, project which was uh, uh, which is fine, uh, a European project for the promotion of uh, regenerative agriculture. 
And uh, we thought that this would be a great opportunity because uh, regenerative agriculture, as you might be aware, is uh, too often used without too little um, meaning, or it's uh, quite co-opted by many different actors, if I say, can say so. So we thought, okay, um, we will use the regenerative agriculture understanding of our understanding, which is an organic, holistic regenerative agriculture, but in an agroecological, so with an agroecological setting. And we applied for this project together with UMKI, which is the Hungarian National Research Institute. And uh, so the, basically this project is to, to is running for three years and each year we are giving a training for at least 30 farmers. And as you can see, it's really a hands-on experience, but we really want to foster as well, like different uh, approaches of acting collectively because what we realized during this bond project that I mentioned before is that our region is really lacking these uh, these uh, cultural approaches uh, to have like uh, a debate where we are not screaming with each other, but we are listening with uh, with respect to each other. So I think we all need to relearn how to how to dialogue together. And uh, we organize as well an international conference for this. And so what brings me to nowadays, like 2023, and what we are planning to do now, uh, is that we are, as we, as I said, like last year, it was more about organizing ourselves internally, what are we like preparing to formalize ourselves uh, to into an association. And now we want to open up and engage with the, the, this variety of, uh, of national net uh, of, uh, of national actors who, uh, who we really need to engage with in order to build a stronger movement. But as well, I think it's quite important to to continue building regional cooperations and collaborations. Um, and by region, either I mean Central Eastern Europe or or with Central Asia and Europe, but as well uh, international collaborations, because we are living in such a globalized world that uh, basically Brazil is just around the corner. And um, as I said, we already started to participate in international processes, and hopefully we will continue to do so. And actually now in the first uh, quadrimester, uh, we are planning to update the mapping that uh, I showed you before, because uh, we finished that in 2019. And even though only a couple of years passed by, many diff like it has been so activated. And uh, so we really want to have like something yet again, like, okay, what is the state of art? It's not gonna be such in depth, but more like a, a shorter one, but an updated versions version of it. And of course, we're participating in this different dissemination activities in order to create these linkages. And, uh, and of course, looking always for, for projects that are fitting in our, in our values, because we really believe that uh, these concrete things can, can enable the, the, not only the purpose, but of course, the financial back, backing of, uh, of these uh, activities to happen. And last but not least, what I believe, strongly believe that it will help to build a movement stronger, not only in Hungary, but in whole Europe, is that we applied to organize the next Agroecology Europe Forum in Hungary, and which will happen in 2023 November, and on, from the 16th till the 18th, um, which will be a great occasion to, to gather the different actors involved in agroecology. And uh, it might be called Agroecology Europe because it's organized by Agroecology Europe. But as I said, we we are going beyond these these like um, borders. And I really believe strongly, and that's why uh, we applied to to host it in Hungary because I think we really need to show the and don't get me wrong, but the Western U U Europeans that indeed Central Eastern Europe and Central Asia is full of agroecological initiatives but we are not we are not showcasing them right now so i cordially and uh, with warm heartedly invite you all to participate in the forum in next november and uh, more information is going to come soon so this was it uh, i hope that uh, it i wasn't too long and uh, and of course if you have any questions i'm more than happy to answer them thank you very much